There are four specific things that traders can learn from the mindset of poker players. And I've had the opportunity to work with some very good poker players and teach them the principles of a successful trading mindset to help them in their poker game. Because there are a lot of similarities between the poker mindset and the trading mindset. And poker players have really mastered this whole idea of probabilistic thinking, of being able to bounce back, of being resilient, of risk managing well. And what I wanna do in this particular video is give you some insights on the mindset of the best poker players to help each and every single one of you become better traders, to be able to manage your risk better and think better in terms of probabilities, to be able to lower your emotional volatilities and stress, and of course, to help you scale up with funding and make more money as traders. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now, the thing I like about poker and I encourage traders to responsibly play a bit of poker and maybe do a little bit of online poker because what you can do if you do it wisely and you play poker with intent is you can train a probabilistic thinking. And the great thing about poker that, especially if you're not that active of a day trader, you're more of a swing trader, is poker hands come around a lot more frequently than trades do. So you have the opportunity to practice your mindset principles when you're playing poker hands. And I'm just drawing a poker table here from a bird's eye view, right? And you've got some cards on the table and there are really four main things that I wanna share with you, four main principles that are commonalities between poker players and traders and that traders can really learn from poker players, okay? And the first one here, let's draw a little bit of a, a table. The first one is this whole idea of when you get dealt hand in poker, you have to know if you've got an edge. You have to know what your expected value is when you get dealt a hand. And you have a certain range when you're a poker player of hands you play in different scenarios or in different situations on the table. And depending where you're sitting at the table, and depending how many people are playing and what the bets are, you then determine how aggressive or how conservative you go with your betting with the current hand you have. So what poker players are very good at, first and foremost, and this is what traders can learn a lot from, is they know, and I'm gonna use trading terminology here, they know their circle of competence and they know what is called their range at the poker table. They know what hands they're betting and they know what hands they're folding depending on the many factors that go on at the poker table. So as a trader, it's very important to recognize that you too need to know what your circle of competence is. You need to know what trades you're gonna take determined by the different factors, determined by the different market condition, determined by how much in drawdown you are for that month or how much in profit you are that month, depending on where in structures we are. You need to determine how aggressive or how sensitive you are to put risk on versus not take that trade. So first and foremost, the first thing that traders can learn from poker players is that you must be very good at understanding what trades you take and when you have risk on in the market and when you decide to risk versus not. And you need to know what your range is. You need to know what your circle of competence is so that you're certain that, all right, in this type of scenario, I'm gonna put this amount of risk on. In this type of scenario, I'm not. And by having that certain level of clarity and making it 100% mechanical in your trading plan, what that allows you to do is it allows you to come to the market with certainty, it allows you to be balanced with your mindset because now you're not overwhelmed with, with decisions, you know exactly what you're doing in every scenario, and it allows you to build consistent profitability with less stress. The next thing poker players are very, very good at is whether they win or lose an individual hand in poker, they're very good at bouncing back because guess what? They, they aren't really in a scenario. They don't have the luxury of, of, of fretting over whether they won or lost that previous hand because the moment that hand's over, the next hand's gonna get dealt. So they're very good at being unfazed or not phased by the outcome. They win a hand or they lose a hand, great, it's on to the next hand. And they're very good at not being phased by either outcome of the previous hand and not letting that affect their next hand. And the terminology in poker is called going on tilt. 
Poker players are very good at identifying, successful poker players are very good at identifying when they're on tilt and having their processes to be able to manage that and bring themselves back to a state where they're a little bit more poised, a little bit more in a state of equilibrium so that the previous hand isn't affecting the future hand, that present, that hand they're playing now. And as a poker player, you have to be very good. If you win that particular hand, great. Not get too caught up in your own head, not get too proud over your hand. Because if you do, then you're more likely to mitigate risk or, or minimize risk in that moment. You're more likely to be in this state of feeling invincible and more aggressive with your hand. And uh, so you have to be very good at managing winning and not get too proud when you win. And when you lose, you also have to make sure you're not going into too much of a fear state and, and exaggerating how risky the game is. But rather, what's very, very important is that you get back to this state of equilibrium and get back to understanding what your circle of competence, what your range is and playing within that and playing, going back to the process. This first step here is all about having a clear process that you're certain in. The second one is all about managing your emotions, both positive and negative emotions. The positive, proud or feeling of happiness and invincibility you get from you win is just as important to manage as the depressive, bad feeling when you lose. Both are incredibly important to manage as poker players, as traders, because if you don't, then the previous hand's gonna affect the current hand you're playing. And so too, as a trader, you have to get very good at not being phased by the outcome, by getting back to a state of equilibrium. And I use, I use the analogy in the market that if you puff yourself up into a set of pride and you, and you exaggerate yourself, you're then more likely to force ideas onto the market because you, you feel invincible, you feel like nothing can stop you. And in those states, you're more likely to go away from your trading plan, your circle of competence, your range, you feel invincible to be able to go out that and you force ideas onto the market. And guess what? The market's never wrong, so you get humbled in those scenarios. So too, if you take a loss on the previous trade, you push yourself into this state of fear and this state of shame, then if the market presents an opportunity to you, you may be too fearful to act, again, not sticking to your trading plan. The only way to build consistent profitability as a trader, the only way to be a successful, consistently profitable poker player is to stay within your range and to uh, consistently execute where you know you have an edge based on a process. Any emotion of fear and greed is gonna deviate from you, you from that and take you away from that. So it's now all about not being phased by the outcome getting back to the state of equilibrium, okay? The next thing that poker players are very, very good at doing, and rather a characteristic they have is they're very resilient. And the reason they're very resilient is because they're not setting unrealistic expectations, right? They don't necessarily have unrealistic expectations on the outcome. Poker players recognize that things can change very, very quickly. You can have the, the largest pot at the table, one moment, you can play one hand and you could, you could go to the smallest pot on the table. So things can change very quickly. So too, you can have the smallest pot at the table and then and uh, the smallest stack at the table and then the next hand you have the biggest stack. So poker players are very good and they don't set expectations on the outcome. They don't have a necessarily an, out, an expectation that they're gonna win every hand. They're very good at embodying probabilistic thinking. They also don't have an expectation that they're necessarily gonna win every hand or every game they play. They recognize again that poker is a probabilistic game. It's a game of odds. It's not a game of certainty. It's a game of probability. So their expectations are balanced and more realistic. Therefore, they're not attached to one outcome of just winning. And therefore, they're more resilient. If they take a loss, great. They didn't have an expectation of a win all the time. And they become very, very resilient. And so too as traders, and this very much ties into the previous principle, we have to learn to be resilient through having balanced, realistic expectations. And really, the expectation is going to be on probabilistic thinking that nobody knows the outcome of the next hand. It's, in the market, impossible to predict the outcome of the next hand. In poker, there's a level of predictability that is it's not present in the market. However, poker players, just like traders, still need to be resilient through having realistic expectations and embodying probabilistic thinking and going away from this idea that you have to win all the time. Winning all the time is a fantasy and it won't happen. And the more addicted you are to winning, the less resilient you are because sometimes you have to take a loss as a poker player and as a trader. And the final thing that I've observed with poker players that would help traders 
is they're very, very good at managing risk. And this, again, very much ties into the previous two principles. When you embody probabilistic thinking and you get out of this whole idea, this fantasy world that I'm going to win every hand, then what you do is you become a lot wiser in the way you risk on individual hands. And you don't risk everything necessarily all the time, but you have a certain risk management protocol that you follow where you risk a percentage of the stack you have. And proper risk management is a key characteristic of successful poker players just as it is as successful traders. Probabilistic thinking implies that there's going to be a strike rate. There's going to be an edge. You're not going to win all the time. And therefore, the poker players who know how to risk manage most effectively and most properly are the ones who sustain the game the longest. So too with traders, those who embody proper risk management and have risk management protocols are very, very good at sticking with the game a little bit longer and riding out the storm, the ups and downs to have consistent profitability. Okay. So these are some key lessons from poker players. And, and like I mentioned at the start, I actually encourage traders to responsibly play maybe a little bit of online poker with a very little amount of money. And what I encourage what I used to do um, very much when I was trying to ingrain the principles, the mindset principles in my own mind, is I would have the principles I wanted to embody and every poker hand I would play, I would focus on embodying those principles before I, before I played that individual hand. And there are really two principles that you wanna get very good at when we talk about trading psychology. The first one is not setting expectations on the outcome, right? This comes over here to resilient, balanced thinking. And when you're playing a poker hand, just like you're taking a trade, you wanna remind yourself that really, nobody knows what's gonna happen next. Nobody really knows the outcome of the next individual trade or next individual poker hand. And it's not about predicting what's about to happen next in the individual trade. Rather, what's most important is going back to your processes and your range and your circle of competence and playing the best hand based on the cards you've been dealt and playing and risking based on what you know your processes state. And it's really about embodying and reminding yourself of that thought process when you're playing the poker hand. I have no idea what's going to happen next, but I'm making this decision because based on my processes, based on what my protocol and strategy say, this is the most objective, wisest process-based decision to make, regardless of what the outcome is. And then the more and more you train that thought process, the more and more you're gonna bring it into your trading. When you're trading, you're gonna be less likely to be forcing ideas into the market, think that you can predict what's gonna happen next. And rather, you're gonna be more focused on making process-based decisions according to your plan. The next principle that's very important to embody, and if you're gonna train your mindset through a little bit of online poker, is getting yourself back to a state of equilibrium after every hand. And if you get a little bit on tilt when you take a loss, it's about bringing yourself back and, and reminding yourself of, of the benefits of taking losses and reminding yourself that, hey, losses are important to remind yourself of the risks in the market and the importance of adhering. You know, it helps you associate pain to bad process and it helps you adhere to the highest quality setups in your trading plan or your poker plan. And if you take a win, it's about reminding yourself of the risks and drawbacks of that. So you can get yourself, you can train yourself to get back to the state of equilibrium where you're just sticking to your process, not caught up in pride, not caught up in shame, but just getting back to your process, being more balanced. And the more and more poker hands you play intentionally by training this type of mentality, the better of a trader you're gonna become. And really I've put, put my uh, free trading mindset tools, the tools that I give to my six figure traders to help them embody this type of mindset. The first one is the Bulletproof Your Mindset tool. It's a completely free tool in the description. Make sure you download that. It's gonna help you embody the proper mindset for your poker and for your trading. It's gonna help you get away from outcome-based thinking and focus and process-based thinking. And the other tool I have is the six-figure trading plan, which is what's gonna help you identify your circle of competence and put it into a mechanical system. So there's a lot that traders can learn from, from poker players in terms of their mindset, and vice versa, there's a lot that poker players can learn from traders. Online poker is a pretty handy tool for a trader if you do it responsibly and you intentionally use it to train the proper mindset before every hand. And then you translate that to your trading, it becomes a very effective exercise um, and it, it helps a lot with your trading. So if you found this useful, please like, comment and subscribe, share this video with your trading friends and those that you know will get value from it. 
Check out the links in the description. There's a lot of valuable information and resources and tools there, completely free. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video.